George Soros has ties to over 30 major news organizations and donates large amounts of money to progress the New World Order. Just so you can see for yourself what kind of man he is, here are some of his quotes. It is sort of a disease when you consider yourself some kind of God, the creator of everything, but I feel comfortable about it now since I began to live it out. I admit that I have always harbored an exaggerated view of my self-importance. To put it bluntly, I fancy myself as some kind of god or an economic reformer like Keynes, each with his general theory, or even better, a scientist like Einstein. Reflexivity sounds like relativity. If truth be known, I carried some rather potent messianic fantasies with me from childhood, which I felt I had to control. Otherwise, I might end up in a really bit. But when I made my way into the world, I wanted to indulge myself in my fantasies to the extent I could afford. Soros has been identified as a frontman of the Anglo-French Rothschilds banking group. And of course, neither he nor the Rothschilds want this fact to be public, but there are many connections to be made between these two. In Soros, the unauthorized biography, pages 5 and 6. As September 15th wore on, George Soros' confidence that Britain would pull the pound out of the ERM was growing. It had been Stanley Drunkenmiller who had thought the time ripe for making a bet against the Sterling. He talked to Soros about doing something. Soros gave him the green light and urged his head trader to bet an even larger sum than Drunkenmiller had in mind. And so Drunkenmiller, acting for Soros, sold $10 billion worth of Sterling. The next morning at 7 o'clock, the phone rang at Soros' home. It was Stan Drunkenmiller with news. While George Soros had slept, he racked a profit of $958 million. When Soros I speak unto thee this day, and I say, be thankful to walk in humility with me. That is, be thankful for the privilege you've been given, to humble yourself, to bow down low, to be respecting and honoring me. Be thankful for the privilege that you have been given to repent before me, and humble the proud fool of your own carnality day after day. For I say that every man in his own carnality bears the very sentence of death because he is a fool. But I say when a man or a woman will learn to pay heed unto me, then I say they can be made wise by receiving the counsel of life that I give unto my own. And I say that they can be brought forth in the truth, the light, the strength, the glory of who I am. For I say it is me, the living God, who is indeed the way that is righteousness, truth, mercy, strength, and hope provided. And it is me, the living God, who will uplift, guide forth, direct, and correct the ones who will pay heed unto me. Now I say this day, consider in the days of old, in the time of Nebuchadnezzar, that it is me, the living God, who gave unto him exactly what it was that he had gained. Yet I say, when he took the glory to himself, when he bragged and strutted and boasted in his own greatness, I say that I brought him down. That is, I humbled him in his foolish pride, I showed him he was merely a man, and I say that I made him to dwell as a beast. And I say, if I did such a thing, I say that I do the same in these times. For I say, when men are lifted up in pride and imagine that they are gods, imagine that they have full dominion over the world, and it is me, the living God, who brings them down. And I say, the majority will never repent of their God complex, but I say, they will go on in pride. But I say, when a man will see his utter wretchedness and his utter need of me through repentance, then I say that he will be restored to the rightness of his mind. But I say, when a man is drunk and swollen on pride, I say that he staggers as a fool. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do not call you to pride, for I say in the drunkenness of the same you will utter many distortions. That is, you will see things from the perspective of your own greatness, which is nothing but delusion and confusion and you will know the madness of the same. For I say that I, the living God, do not call men and women to imagine they are some great thing when it absolutely is not true. But I say that I desire that they would be fully humbled before me and willing to walk in my way. Therefore, I say, count it a privilege to be able to humble yourselves before me, to cry out unto me and be ever guided in my way, and count it a privilege to be a partaker of that which I give you time and again. For I say, it is me, the living God, who gives to the ones who will obey obey me the way of eternal life. And it is me, the living God, who will give to the ones who walk uprightly in me the truth, the light, the strength, and the glory of who I am. Now I say this day that I, the living God, never called my people to go according to walk afar off to be found in the way of fools. But I say that I've called my people to be made glad, ever thankful, to continue to love, to serve, to obey me. 
For I say, when you walk in the way that I've given unto thee, and are made glad for the same, then I say, you are uplifted in me. And I say, you are given the power of my presence, for I will give you the same. Now I say, you are living in a time when I live in God, and dismantling, crashing, bringing down, and bringing to naught the idols that even my own people have taken unto themselves. For I say, that multitudes of those who claim they are mine, when occurring and are continuing to go whoring, under the Babylonian Jezebelian covering of deceit. That is, they have accepted the rulership of the queen of deceit and taken on the same. And I say they have followed after multitude of idols rather than standing in the truth. Now I say this day that idol of in God do not call you to take on idols, to worship idols, not at all. And I say it is a time that it is me, the living God, who is revealing the idols for what they are. Now I say there are multitudes in this land who have worshipped the government, who have made a god of the government, and look to the same. And I say it is me, the living God, who is dismantling such a heap of destruction and revealing it for what it is. Therefore I say do not be shocked nor astounded at the evils that shall be exposed and revealed, for it is my time. That is, it is a time that I, the living God, am showing the iniquity that men and women are functioning in. That is, as they claim they are able to rule, to lead, to guide, I say they do nothing but bring despair. And I say they are bringing the emptiness, the futility of idolatry to multitudes who are far from me. I say this day when my own people take up the idols of the heathen and bow to the same, then I say they become a grief unto me. For I say my people are not meant to maintain idols nor to go after the ways of the heathen and think they gain through the same. For I say when my people turn aside from me to idols, they turn to lies. And I say they will become liars because they are giving themselves to the spirit of falsehood and deceit. I say this day be thankful that you can walk uprightly in me, that you can be guided forth in the truth, the light, the mercy revealed. And I say do not be as the foolish who go according all to their own destruction and dismay. But I say instead be thankful that you can indeed be uplifted, brought forth, and ever guided in my way. And I say be thankful that through me you are given the light upon the path. For I say it is me, the living God, who is the life source. It is me, the living God, who is the strength, the truth, the power, the glory, and I say that I remain. That is, I remain ever present to those who desire to believe upon me. Now I say this day, be thankful when I, the living God, do give you my light, my truth, and my mercy, that you can be guided by me. And I say, be thankful that you can be uplifted in that which I ordain, which is the truth, the light, and the mercy revealed. For I say, it is me, the living God, who is the one who will uplift you and guide you, who will direct you and correct you each and every day. And it is me, the living God, who will show you that indeed I am well able, as you will trust in me. For I say, when you keep your hope aright that is upon me, then yes, you are brought forth. But I say, when you turn to the ways of the heathen, take up other gods, other lovers, then I say, you become as a fool. Now I say, this day that I, the living God, do intend that my people would realize that pride is the very deception that leads so many to the ditch. For I say, when men grow proud, then they think they can eat of the table of devils that is the world, and be found still abiding in me. And I say it is because of pride that they are blinded, they take up the rudiments of the world, they take up the entertainments, the diversions, and of course the perversions of the world. And I say, all the while they claim it is me, they serve, they are liars, deceiving themselves. For I say, that pride is the drunkenness that leads men far from me and causes them to end in a ditch. Now I say, consider when you grow angry at your brother, your sister, because of pride, where shall the same take you? I say it will take you into a ditch of retaliation, of hatred and bitterness and false accusation, all for naught. For I say, if you simply will pull down your pride when it flares up within you, then I say you are able to maintain in me. But I say to the fool who gives way to pride, then the way before him will be full of the sorrow of the saints. Now I say, if you consider that it was through pride that Nebuchadnezzar the heathen thought he had done so many great things. And I say that it was through the humbling that I put upon him that he was forced to confess that he was no god at all. 
That is, he was forced to admit that it is me, the living God, who is far above men. That it is me, the living God, who reigns supreme throughout the ages, while men will come and go. Now, when you consider that the greatest of men of those days, in the pagan sense, was reduced to the level of a beast, and I say that it was done by the power of my declaration, I say that I brought him low. Now I say it is the time that I, the living God, am bringing down the Jezebelian reign that has ruled with the arm of cruelty over the land. And I say that I'm bringing down the same that the ones who desire truth will be released and able to repent and return to me. But I say for the ones who will indeed desire the workings of pride and idolatry, I say they will be held captive and beaten in the same. I say this day do not hold to a proud image of who and what you are, nor what you think you could be if you were aside from me. For I say such deceits are nothing but the workings of the wicked ones sent to destroy. I say this day that I the living God do not call you to deception, but I say that I call you to the truth. And I say that I call you to walk in the light that I give you each and every day. Now I say this day that I the living God do not call you to be a partaker of the ways of the heathen that are dark and evil not at all. But I say that I call you to be uplifted, brought forth, and that provided in my way. And I say that I call you to be thankful that in me so are you given the light upon the path. I say that I call you to be thankful that in me you are directed, corrected, and ever guided in light. Now I say it is a privilege to believe me, to trust me, and obey me each day. And I say it is a privilege to know that I am the one who gives you the truth and the light upon the path. I say it is a privilege to know that I am the one who will ever guide you in light. For I say if you are accepting and not rejecting of the light, the truth, the mercy, and the hope of who I am, then you are guided by me. But I say when you choose the way of abomination, the way of idolatry, the way of whoredom, you choose death. I say, consider how many there are who are steeped in the death culture, who are covered by death and headed to damnation of soul. I say, there are endless multitudes who have been deceived during the Jezebelian rule of cruelty over the land. And I say they are in a sense victims, but I say that it is me who gives them the chance to repent. And I say if they will accept that chance, repent, and come unto me, then I say they can be returned to a right mind. That is, the mind of humility that I the living God desire to see in the sons of men. Now I say this day, be glad that I will give you the light, the truth, the mercy, and the hope day by day. And I say be thankful that I will direct you, correct you, and bring you forth as you pay heed unto me. For I say when it is me that you look to in trust, in faith and confidence day after day, then you are guided in my way. Better say when you look to the way of the world, believe in the fantasy, the vanity, the lies of the saints, you are headed in death. I say this day be glad for the privilege that I give to my own to walk uprightly, to be ever guided and directed in me. And I say be thankful that to me you are given the newness of life. That is, you are given the purpose, the truth, the strength, the power, and the glory of who I am. And I say that you will be guided, directed, and corrected by me. I say, be glad even now to look to the way that I offer, the way that I give, and be brought forth in the same. And I say, be thankful that you do not need to be as the foolish, the proud, the arrogant, who take their own way. For I say, in so doing, they are choosing to lose out with me. And I say, in so doing, they are going in the way of stubborn, proud fools. I say that I, the living God, do not call you to be a stubborn, proud fool, defiant of me, but I call you to humble yourself each day unto me. And I say that I call you to thank me and praise me, that I am the one who is the source of life given unto thee. For I say, when you serve me in the attitude of gratitude, so are you guided in me. But I say, when you will serve the gods of the heathen, you are serving deceit. I say this day, remember that it is me, the living God, who is able to humble the highest of kings. And it is me, the living God, who is able to bring down the agenda of the wicked and cause it to be nothing at all. I say, do not fear evil in men, but fear me. For I say, it is me, the living God alone, you are meant to serve with gladness each day. I say, do not tremble at the threats of wicked governments, but I say, keep your hope upon me, for I am thy God. And I say, it is me, the living God, who is the resource, the strength, the safety provided to my own. I say, thank me and praise me for the privilege to be found in me. The way of life eternal, the way of strength enduring, the way that I give to thee.
This is the character of that demented creature, George Soros. A creature who operates not of his own volition, but on orders which he receives from the British Empire. Their intention, knowing that their globalized free trade system has come to an end, is to prevent a Franklin Roosevelt-style presidency at all costs and to replace it with a system of world empire. Therefore, those associated with Soros and his MoveOn.org cult must come to recognize their foolishness and sever all ties to this amoral Nazi collaborator. Because if you succeed in falling into their trap, then into the fiery depths of hell will they take us all. The chronicle of debauchery and depravity so horrific it's hard to believe. You have to ask yourself, could Teresa be just making it up? No. I know that's true and what's not. No, I know what I saw.